In this lesson, we are looking at ecological succession. Here are our three subject matter dot points that we are looking at today. All right, change is a natural feature of all ecosystems. We have to remember that these are all dynamic ecosystems. They are never static. Change can occur on so many different scales. So for example, a tree might fall, disturbing the soil, all the microhabitats within it and the organisms in its path. An animal might dig in the soil, making nutrients available for other organisms, but disturbing the root systems of a plant. Change can be really catastrophic. We could be talking about a fire or a cyclone, um, which can affect both terrestrial and uh, if you're talking the cyclone, you can talk about the aquatic ecosystems that are impacted as well. And humans can alter the natural landscape through agriculture. The other part of this is recovery also takes place after some disturbances. Now, the regular and irregular types of changes on a temporal scale as communities change over time. We could be talking seasons, weather. They're the regular changes. You might be talking mating season of an organism as well, you know, in their reproductive cycle. Could be talking tides. So there's many examples of abiotic and biotic cycles. But on a larger scale, as time passes, entire communities are replaced by new ones in a type of serial replacement. And this is known as succession. So in the same way that you as students pass through all the grades and graduate and the teachers come and go in time, an entire new and diverse community of staff and students will populate a school ecosystem. That's sort of how succession works. Communities are a place, sorry, which replace one another are known as seers. It's a very strange looking word, I know. And the first seer in an area is known as the pioneer community. In this community, um, you know, it's slowly replaced in serial stages until a stable climax community is, esta is established. So this community will stay for a really long time, but it's obviously pending further um, further disturbance and change, which, you know, brings on further succession. So climax communities are ones with complex structures and interactions, all those kinds of things we've been talking about already. They have narrow niches and high species diversity. And this is kind of the end point um, of a growing community in an ecosystem. There are a few types of ecological succession and our focus are on primary and secondary. Now, in short, primary succession occurs in an area where there's been no pre-existing growth and secondary succession occurs where there has been significant disturbance in an area that was previously inhabited. Primary succession refers to the initial colonization of an area where there has been no pre-existing community. Essentially, it's bare land that's colonized by organisms of any kind for the first time. So some examples of primary succession include newly emerged volcanic islands in the ocean, uh, once glaciers retreat, leaving land um, that's underneath exposed for the first time, areas where previous communities have existed but have been completely extinguished by volcanic eruption and the lava has cooled, and on coastal sand dunes where no life currently exists. Now, the first organisms to inhabit the new land are known as pioneer species. And pioneer species are usually pretty simple and they're small numbers of species interactions and they have really broad niches. They can pretty much live wherever they want to. Uh, the communities as a whole, when they start to grow, have really low species diversity. Obviously, if only one can come in and grow on that bare land, the diversity is pretty minimal, right? Um, so the pioneer species have no real competition and they take advantage of the land and the resources that are available. However, we're really talking about living on bare ground, so there's not really a lot of resources around. They're often symbiotic, uh, they're often in symbiotic relationships, sorry, with bacteria, so they can actually fix nitrogen from the air. Now, lichen are an example of one of the most common pioneer species on a bare rock environment. And lichen is a type of composite organism, it's made up of fungus and another photosynthetic organism like an algae or a cyanobacteria, and that's a mutualistic relationship. So the photosynthetic organism can produce carbohydrates and it can also fix nitrogen from the air, and the fungus actually gives it a bit of a protective structure to live in. Now, lichens can absorb minerals through their body structures, which allows them to live on the bare rock, right? And they can produce and secrete acids, which weather down the surface of the rock and it creates these little dust particles which get blown around by the wind and settle in cracks. And this actually starts to form a thin layer of soil. This is where soil can come from. And eventually that's going to allow other vegetation to establish itself in that region. 
Now, in general, pioneer species are all of these things. Small photosynthetic, they can fixate nitrogen. They're really tolerant of harsh conditions. They are selected. They're intolerant of shade. You can see here, this is a tree with lichen on it where um, the, the lichen is growing on the, sh uh, on the sunny side and the shady side, there's not as much. Uh, they don't manage well with competition. They thrive in poor nutrient areas and they can alter the environment to let others come in and live. So when lichens, as an example, die off, they then add nutrients to the soil they've created and eventually other organisms can come in and establish themselves to immigrate to the area. And a classical sequence of colonization in these areas begins with lichens, mosses, liverworts, progresses then to ferns, grasses, shrubs, and it culminates in that climax community of mature forest. Once the pioneer species have established themselves and created conditions that are suitable for other species to inhabit the areas as well, they can decline in numbers, right? They leave space for more complex organisms to come in and thrive in the environment. Now, an excellent example of primary succession is seen on this tiny little island south of Iceland, and it's called Circe Island. And it was formed from an underwater volcano, uh, so the, it, it erupted and it began in 1963, and it finally stopped erupting in 1967. And the eruption site um, was well below sea level, but it was ongoing for so long that the repeated flow of molten rock in the ocean, it cools down gradually forms enough to breach the sea level and form new land, right? And because it was brand new land, it was this perfect case study to observe and um, the order in which the com pioneer communities and seers start to form. So sea rocket was the first organism to establish itself on the rock. You might have seen this kind of plant before. Um, and plants tend to arrive through seed dispersal via wind and water. And eventually some plants are carried in by bird waste, depending on how close to other land masses it is. And as the pioneer community gradually is replaced by new seers, the ecosystem attempts to reach a more complex climax community. 